Okay, we're going to start off with a quote from Feynman, which is, what I cannot create, I do not understand. What Feynman meant by this was, he felt like if you couldn't start with a blank sheet of paper, start writing, teach somebody something, teach yourself something, really explain it, you don't really get it. So we're going to start up by saying, uh, we have some rules here for understanding circuits. I call them rules for circuit domination. They're going to guide us here. Now, you're ready for circuits when you can write these rules on a blank sheet of paper, not forget any of them, understand all of them. If you can do that, you're ready to move on and understand this. If you can't, because you don't remember them, whatever, then you got to just practice, 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 rewrite, 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 until they just fall out of your head, and then you're good to go. So let's start with the first one. Uh, resistors eat voltage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, let's say number two. Uh, the voltage voltage at the end of a circuit equals zero, and any current leaving the battery must return. Now this is not a video that's going to tell you the basics of what a volt is, what an amp is, um, those sort of physics-y basics. This is just on how to analyze circuits. So here we go. We have a battery, simplest circuit you can have, just a battery and a lamp. Of course, we're drawing that lamp as a resistor because that's what the battery sees it as. Um, so let's say we have a uh, 9 volt battery. We have a uh, 3 ohm resistor. We're going to put Ohm's law up here in the form of Ohm's law triangle. V equals IR. Now, of course, we're using, thanks to Ben Franklin, we're using conventional current. Um, let's see here. We've got two out of three, so we're going to solve for the third, which is I, V over R, 9 over 3. So our current here is going to be 3 amps, and let's see, resistors eat voltage. Well, considering this and considering the voltage at the end of the circuit equals zero, um, which this means we're going to have a 9-volt drop, 9 volts, um, across this resistor, and we're going to have 3 amps going through the resistor. How, let's make sure we're consistent. Resistors eat voltage. Yes, this resistor eight nine volts. The voltage at the end of the circuit equals zero. Yes, all the volts are gone. Any current leaving the battery must return. Three amps left the battery, and three amps return to the battery. Remember, little physics here. Uh, the actual electricity is the three amps. Um, an amp is a coulomb per second. And the pressure of the electricity is the volts. So basically, the, elect the electricity pressure or voltage is all taken away by the resistor. Um, but in order to have a complete circuit, the three amps must make it all the way back. Any current leaving the battery must return. Now, why do current and voltage go in opposite directions? Uh, because when scientists were first studying this namely ben franklin they didn't know whether current was a positive charge carrier or a negative charge carrier remember this is like 200 no 100 years before the electron was discovered so they didn't know whether it was a positive or a negative charge they took a guess and then we just stuck with it it doesn't matter deal with it okay so simple circuit number one again keep in mind all these rules um, now let's step it up and add one more rule. Two resistors, I'm working off my list here. Um, two resistors in series have the same circuit, or excuse me, same current. Two 
two resistors in series. Okay, so let's draw this thing. We've got, we'll do a nine volt battery again. Let's say we have a three ohm and a, I don't know, four ohm resistor. I'm sure we're gonna make the math a little easier. Uh, let's make it a six ohm resistor. Okay, now, uh, remember, batteries are like these all-knowing sentient beings. Um, the battery, as, as we like to say in class, the battery is full send all the time. If there's no resistance, the battery is going to want to send all the current. If there's a lot of resistance, the battery is going to want to send all the current. But it can't send as much because there is more resistance. Um, we know this to be true. If you stick a fork in an outlet, um, all the electricity is going to come rushing out. If you stick a plastic fork in an outlet, it's going to be safer, but a lot, of electricity is, a lot less electricity is going to be coming out because there's more resistance. Which is to say, the first thing you got to do when you figure out how much current is leaving the batteries, you got to figure out the total resistance. These two are in series, so the total resistance here, I'll write it up, I guess we're going to do purple, REQ. Uh, for two series, for two resistors in series, it's just R1 plus R2. So REQ here is going to be 9 ohms. Um, now, you might think that these two are in parallel. After, you know, they look like they're in parallel because these two lines are parallel. But you want to think, again, of electricity as water through a pipe. Is there a choice for current to follow? No, there's no choice. It leaves the positive end of the battery goes through here, must keep going all in this one loop, doesn't have a choice, there's no junction, there's no parallel branches, these two are in series. So once we have that, we can calculate the current, again using our Ohm's Law triangle, I is V over R, so we have 9 volts divided by uh, 9 ohms, so current is going to be 1 amp. So 1 amp, leaving the battery. Um, resistors each voltage, the voltage at the end of the circuit equals zero. Any current leaving the battery must return to the battery. Well, if there's only one path for the electricity to flow through, then it must be one amp here. Still one path. One amp here. So any current leaving the battery must return. One amp left, one amp got back, good to go. Now, two resistors in series have the same current. Do these have the same current? Yes, they do. We're going to add one more rule here, perhaps the most important of all the circuit rules, which is if you can play two of three, you must. Now, what does that mean? Two out of three. Here's our three, voltage, current, resistance. If you can, if you have two out of the three of these things, then you calculate the third. Don't think about it. Just ask yourself, can I calculate the third thing? You want to look at these circuit problems as kind of like a ball of yarn. You don't necessarily know how the whole thing's going to unravel. But if you just focus on one little part that you know you can do, uh, eventually you're going to be able to unravel the whole thing. So let's think about it. Um, you may say to yourself, I don't know what the voltages drop here. Well, fine. But can you play two out of three? Yes, you can. I'm going to underline this because it's so important. So let's see, right here for this resistor, can we play two out of three? We have amps, we have ohms. Can we calculate volts? Yes, we can. I times R. So we have three times one would be three volts. Um, I'm using a slanted arrow here because uh, it's a voltage drop. Um, and notice that the arrow is pointing in the opposite direction of the current because that's our convention. Current's going from right to left here, so I'm going to put my arrow... Going against it, uh, 6 times 1, again, I times R, 6 times 1, to get our voltage drop, so that's 6 volts, and boom, we're done. Uh, if you can play 2 out of 3, you must play 2 out of 3. Now, look, we have a 3-volt drop here, a 6-volt drop here, add them up, and you get, aha, 9 volts. That puts us consistent with the other rules, which is the voltage at the end of the circuit equals 0, and resistors these voltage. Is it a coincidence that these two numbers add up? Absolutely not. This is a law of conservation of charge, law of conservation of energy, if you want to look at it that way too. It always works out like this.
So let's try another one. The same thing will be true if we have three resistors. Uh, actually, I'm going to skip that. And we're going to move on to a different kind. So we have, I think we have our last rule now. I want to make sure I'm doing this. Yep. Okay. Two. In parallel. Two resistors in parallel have the same voltage okay i'm going to draw this uh, a little bit different than the first two but it doesn't matter because wires don't care so we're going to have two resistors like so we'll make the, the battery five volts uh, let's make this three ohms let's make this five ohms all right, so we got our circuit here. We have a 3 ohm and a 5 ohm resistor together. Let's figure out our EQ. Uh, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 3 is 5. Okay, so we got our circuit here. We're going to first figure, figure out our EQ. So we have, let's see, using my calculator here, 1 over 3, close bracket plus open bracket, 1 over 5, close bracket, 15, excuse me, 815, so 15 over 8 is 1.875, so let's round up to 1.9. So our EQ here is, just writing these out, our EQ equals 1.9 ohms from there we can calculate the current i is v over r so we have 5 volts divided by 1.9 using decimals because the pedantic people are going to want us to so we got total current of 2.6 better make that in red total current i equals 2.6 amps which means uh, 2.6 amps are going to leave the battery. Oh, never said this, but we're going to say it now. Uh, the long end of the battery is the positive side. You can imagine that the longer line is a plus sign, the shorter line is a minus sign. So we got 2.6 amps. Okay, now, resistors eat voltage. The voltage at the end of the circuit is zero. Any current leaving the battery must return. So we have 2.6 amps here. Again, if we think of this as water, you can see that the 2.6 amps leaves the battery, gets to this spot, and now we have a fork in the road. Some of the current's going to go this way. Some of the current's going to go this way. Um, it's going to join back up here and then return to the battery. So we know at this point it's going to be 2.6 amps, but we don't know what it's going to be here because it has to make a decision about where to go. Now, obviously... This is the bigger, excuse me, um, yes, this is the bigger blockage. So because this is a bigger blockage, this is you want to think of this as like a clog in the pipe, um, less current or less electricity is going to flow through here. More electricity is going to flow through the 3 ohm. Question is, how much is going to be in, in one spot? Well, two resistors in series have the same current. These are not in series. Two resistors in parallel have the same voltage. Aha. So we know, using this circuit rule, that because these two resistors are in parallel, they have the same voltage, they're both 5 volts. So let's see, the current's going to be going from left to right, so our voltage drop is going to be from right to left for both of these, and they are both going to be 5 volt drops. Now, you may say to yourself, this is um, 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 volts, this violates the law of conservation of energy. Um, for now, if you want to make this easier on yourself, memorize this part. If you want to know why they're the same, that's the subject for another video. So, back to our rules. If you can play two out of three, you must play two out of three. Well, let's look. We got voltage and resistance, V and R. Voltage and resistance, V and R. So we can calculate the third thing. So V divided by R is I. V divided by R is I. Five over three. 
5 divided by 3. Let's say we got 1 point, oops, 1.7 we'll say. No, we're doing current, aren't we? 1.7 amps. Um, and then here, of course, we have 1 amp. Um, okay, good. Mental math here, easier thing I could have done is to say I for the bottom one is V over R, 5 over 5 is 1. And then I can just do 2.6 minus 1 to get this. Actually, if we're going to round here or save us from being critiqued from the pedantic people, we're going to say that that's 1.6. Okay. Um, so again, law of conservation of charge comes up again. If you have 1, .8, 1 amp going through one branch, you must have the remaining going from this branch. As you add them up, you must get the same thing. Okay. So we have now done... Two resistors in series, two resistors in parallel. Let's try a combination. Um, I'm going to erase all this stuff. Hopefully you have it written down on your sheet of paper because you're being a good student and following along. If you don't, pause the video and rewind it. Write it down. We're going to be coming, obviously, back to those rules over and over again. I mean, they should be in your head anyway. But, you know, test time. Things get nervous. So my suggestion is if you're taking a test on this, first thing you do is you write these rules down, make it easier on yourself. So here we go. So we got two in series. This is the part of the lecture when the students start groaning because they're like, oh boy, what are we going to do here? So let's say we have a three volt battery. This would be like two double A's in uh, series together. Let's say we have a two ohm resistor here a 4 ohm resistor here and a, I don't know, 7 ohm resistor here. Um, calculating REQ, working from the outside in towards the battery. Again, calculating REQ for a combination series parallel circuit outside of the scope of this video. Let's assume you know how to do it. So I'm just going to do it here on my calculator. 1 over 4 plus... 1 over 7, yep, 28 over 11, 28 over 11 is 2.5454, okay, and then once we simplify this down, we're going to add it to the 2 ohm, so that gives us an REQ of 4.5, we'll say 4.5 REQ, numbers don't always work out perfectly. That's okay. 4.5 ohms. Okay, REQ is 4.5 ohms. We've got REQ, we've got V, we got a 3 volt battery. Um, so we can calculate I. I is V over R. So 3 over, what do we say? 3, yeah, V over R. 3 over 4.5. Yeah, two thirds. Amazing. So we'll go 0 0.67. If you, I guess we're sticking with sig figs. X. Oh no, we're not. Who cares about sig figs for now? Okay. So we have 0.67 amps leaving the battery, and we have 4.5 uh, is our total resistance. So here we go. Let's start labeling this thing. 0 0.67 amps. Going back to our circuit rules, any current that leaves the battery must return to the battery. So we know that this is 0.67 amps. Oops. God help you if you're not writing any units next to your numbers. We know that uh, the current must go through this 2 ohm resistor. So this is 0 0.67 amps right there. If you can play 2 out of 3, you must play 2 out of 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have... Let's say, what are we trying to calculate? We have V here, so it's I times R. We have current, we have resistance, we're going to calculate voltage. I times R, 0 0.67 times 2. 0 0.67 times 2. Fans of mental math are not proud of me right now. Uh, 1.34, so we got 
1.3. Whoops. That's my chalk. 1.34 volts here. Okay. Now, um, what's going on here? So now we have 1.34 volts here gone. We have 0.67 amps through. What do we do with these two? Well, remember, uh, voltage is the energy of electricity, as I like to think about it. So if we have three volts total, and we know that the voltage at the end of the circuit, let's go back to our circuit rules. We know the voc voltage at the end of the circuit must be zero. And these two must have the same voltage. So how do you reconcile those ideas? Well, if we start with three volts and 1.34 get burned off by this resistor, and these two must have the same uh, voltage, then you know that the voltage in these two must be the energy that's left over after the 1.34 is burned off by that first resistor, which is to say the voltage there is just 3 minus 1.34, which is 1.66 volts. And again, these have to be the same because they're in parallel. So I can then therefore deduce, what do we do in two sig figs? That these are both 1.66 volts each. Again, um, I did two out of three here to calculate 1.34 volts. I know that three volts left the battery, 1.34 get burned off by this guy, and then these have to be the same, and then they uh, just get the leftover voltage. Now that I have these, I can calculate the remaining current. 0.67 goes through this resistor and then gets to this little junction right here. See how this looks like a fork in the road? It comes in, goes here, goes here, leaves, comes back, and is going to be the same here. Some of it's going to go here, some of it's going to go here. Let's figure out how much. I is V over R. Uh, so we got 1.66 over 4, which is 0.42 through this guy. Amps. Um, two ways to calculate this one. You could either do 0.67 minus 0.42. Let's do that. 0 0.67, 0.25. Just to check our math, we can also do uh, I is V over R again. Uh, 1.66 divided by 7. Come on. And we get 0.237. The numbers aren't always going to work out to be perfect, perfect, because there's like rounding going on everywhere, but that's okay as long as you're close enough. Um, and when you add these two together, of course, you get 0.67, and we're done. So keep those mind. So keep those circuit rules in mind. Um, they will guide you. Now let's pull a problem off of our problem set here. The problem set I'm working on. Uh, naturalphilosophers.org. I'll post the I'll post the link to the PDF below in the description. Uh, we just did 14, but I had a request to do it anyway, so let's do it anyway. We have I'll draw this exactly like it is on the notes or on the problem set. So we have a 12 volt battery. We have a 400 ohm, so many ohms, resistor, another one here, another one here, and back it goes to the battery. This is 500 ohms, this is 700 ohms, and away we go. Okay, so... First thing you want to do, calculate REQ because the battery is like full send all the time. Um, let's see, we have a 500 ohm, so 1 over 500. Close the bracket. Add to that 1 over 700. Close the bracket. And then 1 over... Come on, 
Then you get 292.4 for that little section. And then we're just going to add to that 400. And we're getting an REQ of 692.4. So let's just call it 692. I got to erase this stuff. Six ninety two ohms. Um, okay, so if we're going to calculate our total current, it's V over R. We have a twelve volt battery divided by six ninety two. So twelve six ninety two is point O. Let's see. Let's use a metric prefix here. Seventeen point three milli amps um yeah metric system love it okay uh 17.3 milliamps so we know that out of the positive end of the battery we have 17.3 milliamps we know that why did i write labels um we know that through here through this first resistor it has to be the same because there's only one current path. So to figure out the voltage drop here, we have to do I times R. So 17.3 milliamps times 400 is a six point, we'll call it, yeah, 6.9. 6.9. Six volt drop here. Okay, and same as the last problem. <clears throat> When you have a 6.9 volt drop there and you start with 12, you are left over with 12 minus 6.9, 5.1 volts. And because these are in parallel, they both must have the same voltage. Six, uh, 5.1 volt drop here, 5.1 volt drop here. Um, and again, if you can play two out of three, you must play two out of three. So let's see, our current is going to be whatever it is here, whatever it is here. So we have, let's see, I is V over R. So we have 5.1 V, so 5.1 divided by 500. So we got 10.2 milliamps here. And then we have 5.1 volts on the bottom one divided by 700 ohms. And we have 7.3, we'll call it here. Add them up and you get 17.3. Close enough. Again, there's lots of rounding going on here. A lot of the conservation of charge holds through. We're going to do two more practice problems here. So let's start. Uh, we're working through number 15 on the problem set here. Um, again, problem set, you'll see a link to the problem set, to the PDF in the description. So let's see, we got the positive end is on the right. Copying this again from what's online. We got another resistor here. We got two in this branch. And then we have a 10 ohm resistor on the top. So let's draw this out, 10 ohms. We have five ohms, eight ohms, uh, three ohms and two ohms. Pedantic kid in the back. Isn't this circuit broken because you didn't? Shh, just be quiet. Just be quiet. Okay. Uh, so we got to calculate our EQ. Well, uh, let's see. We got these two resistors are in series, so that's going to be. I'm just going to take some notes over here for myself. We got a five ohm over there. Those two are in series. Actually, you know what? Let's just draw this out simplified. Why not show our work? Um, yeah, so we have our battery here. These two simplified down to five ohms. These two simplified down. We got a 10 ohm up there. Uh, so let's see, we got 13 here. All right, now it's not clear how the five, I mean, maybe it is to you, but it's not to a typical high school kid. Um, maybe it's not clear to you how the five interacts with both the 10 and the 13, 
but there's probably little dispute that the five, excuse me, that the 10 and the 13 are in parallel with each other. So let's do that to simplify things. One over 10 plus, come on. One over 13. Uh, okay, so if I do those two in REQ, I get 5.65 um, ohms. Let's just redraw this here. So we got 5.65 ohms with this one, which is 5 ohms. And then back to the battery. I drew it different. Who cares? Um, so now you can see that these two simplified down to this and the result of that this 5.65 is in pair excuse me it's in series with the five giving us an req of 10.65 ohms let's write that up here 10.65 ohms okay missed my chalk can't say my handwriting would be any better if I had it. Okay, there's our EQ. Now, remember, what does the battery want to do? Full send. How much full send are we going to get? How much current are we going to get? Uh, we're going to calculate I, which is V over R. Our total battery voltage, didn't write that in yet, sorry, is 12 volts. Okay, with that in mind, we have I is V over R, so we have 12 volts divided by R, which is 10.65, 12 over... Come on, 12 over 10.65, is that right? 10, 12 over 10 point, yes it is. So that's gonna be 1.13 amps. Uh, this is gonna leave the positive end over here, 1.13 amps, and it's gonna go through here amps again one current path it's going to be here uh, you can see here there's a split some is going to go this way some is going to go that way it's going to connect back together here and it's going to go 1.13 amps now what the current is in this stuff don't worry about it yet don't think about all the problems you have in your life all at once attack them piece by piece okay uh, circuit rule uh, we didn't number them, so who cares? Let's see. We got. Uh, we want to play two out of three. We have current here. We have resistance here. Current, resistance. If you can play two out of three, exactly. So we have I times R. So I, 1.13 times R. So we're going to have a voltage drop here. Let's try some mental math. 2.26. Wow, amazing. 2.26 volts is dropped there. Again, can we play two out of three here? Yes. All the current leaves the battery. It must all go through this resistor because there's only one uh, path for it to go. Voltage drop three times. Yeah, I can't do that in my head. One point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. Three times 1.13. 3.39. Volts. Okay. We play two out of three. Now, um, let's see. We have two branches that are in parallel. Two branches are in parallel, which means the voltage in this branch and the voltage in this branch must be the same. I did not say that the voltage in each of these resistors is, is going to be the same. The voltage in each branch is going to be the same. Well, I started with 12. 2.26 got burned off here. 3.39 got burned off here. When I do 3.39... 3.39 plus 2.26, I get 5.65. Well, I started with 12, um, and I lost both of these, 3.39 and 2.26, which, of course, is equal to, as I just said, 5.65 volts. And when I do 12 minus 5.65, I 
I get 6.35. 6.35 volts. Now, again, going back to what I said before, voltage uh, in parallel branches is the same. Parallel branches. So this branch and this branch both have the same voltage. Now, how much? We started with 12 volts. You can think of 12 volts of energy. That's an okay way of thinking about it. Um, and 5.65 got burned off, which means 6.35 are left over for what? For this branch and this branch. Now, it's not clear how much current and voltage is in each one of the resistors. Again, do you have to think about all your problems at once? No, you don't. You should not. What do you know? What can you figure out? It's clear that if this branch and this branch have parallel voltages, 5.65 is burned off by these two guys, 6.35 is left over. So what that means is that, let's see, current is going to go this way. The voltage here, this is the key, is 6.35 volts. Again, this branch and this branch are the same which means this is 6.35. And again, if you can play two out of three, you must play two out of three. So that means if you have voltage and you have resistance, you must calculate the current. So V over R, 6.35, 6.35 divided by 10, 0.635, which means the current here is, what do we say, oh yeah, 0.635 amps, 0.635 amps. Aha, so if we have 1.3 amps leaving the battery and 0.635 go in the top branch, what's left over for the bottom branch? Well, 1.13 minus 0.635 Come on. is 0.495. Why am I using three decimal places? Couldn't tell you. 495 amps. So boom, there you go. Um, again, talking about the water analogy, the voltage is the pressure, the current is the water itself. 1.31 um, go into this junction. Some of the water goes to, I don't know, your bathroom. Some of it goes to the kitchen. 0.635 go here, which means whatever's left over must go here, which is to say 1.13 minus 0.635 equals 0.495. And again, once you, uh, if you can play two out of three, you must play two out of three. What's our voltage drops here is now? So volts are equal to current times resistance. So we have two resistors in series, which means there's only one current path. The current here must be the same in both. If you want to calculate voltage, it's I times R. So 0 0.495, 0 0.495 times 8, 3.96. Again, we're going the opposite direction, 3.96 volts. And times five, 2.4, we're doing two decimal here, so 2.48, 2.48 volts. And uh, yeah, if you look at that, let's see, let's check my math here. 2.48 plus 3.96 equals, 6.44, uh, yeah, that's pretty close, 6.35, 6.44. Again, the numbers aren't going to work out perfectly, perfectly, because they're rounding, but that's pretty good. And then, look, if you add this up, this, uh, the 6.35, which is, again, the same in here, and add that and add that, boom, you get 12 volts or pretty close. And we're done. So, like I said before, you want to think of these things as like a ball of yarn. You may not know how to do the whole thing. Don't get overwhelmed. Look for tiny little things that you can calculate, and as long as you know those circuit rules, you'll be fine. All right, advanced problem. So that was number, f uh, what number was that? That was 15 on the problem set. Let's do the last one they're going to do, which is number 13. I know we're jumping around a little bit, but I just don't care. Okay. 
You can see we have Pharrell making an appearance here. He uh, was cranky, so I let him. Don't talk to me like that on camera. It's not nice, Pharrell. So we let him perch himself. He's just trying to exert his dominance over other, other, other people. It's fine. I'm not threatened by it. All right, so we're doing 13 now. Should I write that up there? Sure. What number are we doing? 13. Okay, a 5 ohm resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, and a 15 ohm resistor are connected in parallel with a battery. Okay, let's draw it. Did you show your work? No. Well, that's why you don't understand it. Did you make a drawing? No. Well, that's why I don't understand it. Did you put numbers after, sorry, labels after your numbers for units? No. Well, that's why you don't understand it. Okay, we have a 5 ohm resistor. We have a 10 ohm resistor, and we have a 15 ohm resistor uh, connected to with a battery. Doesn't give me the voltage. The current through the 5 ohm resistor is 2.4 amps. Okay, so that's going to come this way. 2.4 amps. A 20 ohm resistor is added to the circuit in parallel with the other resistors. Interesting. Describe the effect of the addition of this resistor has on the amount of electrical energy expended by the 5 ohm resistor in two minutes. Calculate the amount of electrical energy expended in the 5 ohm resistor in two minutes. Well, are we talking about this one? I don't know. Let's just figure this out for now. Okay. Um, Okay, keeping in mind the batteries want to, that's right, full send all the time. The amount of current that leaves the battery is proportional, proportional to um, the volts and the resistance. Batteries have constant voltage. If you want to know what the voltage of any battery it is, look at it. It's usually labeled. So we don't know what it is here. Okay, um, so we know that as resistance gets less, current gets more. Again, if you stick a fork in an outlet, don't do this. But if you stick a fork in an outlet, you're going to get more current. If you stick a, sorry, metal fork in an outlet, you're going to get more current. If you stick a plastic fork in an outlet, you'll get less current. Don't try it anyway. So with that in mind, we need to know, we need to remember that resistance is important here. So let's calculate REQ just because it's good practice here. 1 over 10. And then add to that 1 over 15. Okay. 1 over that. Okay. So REQ the way it is here is 2.73. Uh, Ohms. Now the question says, describe the effect of the addition of this resistor has on the amount of electric, electrical engineer, electrical energy. Excuse me. A 20 ohm is just added. Okay. So it's asking what happens. We have another circuit. It's asking us to compare. If we add another resistor. It says it's going to be 20 ohms, 15, 10, and 5. Well, I know I can tell you this. Um, if you give water, or in this case electricity, another current path or another um, way for it to go, um, it's going to give you more current or it's going to give you more electricity or it's going to give you more water. Think of this as a, um, let's say you have a drain, like a storm drain, like a funnel like this, and water is flowing down the drain. Okay. Think of this resistor network as this water. If you give another current path for it to flow, that is, you just poke a little hole in the side of your drain. The water is going to leave the funnel or the drain 
more quickly. So which basically is saying your current is going to go up. Current's going to drain faster because you have given another path for the current to flow. So I don't really care what the uh, current flow here, excuse me, the resistor is. If you add another one that's in parallel, it's going to go quicker. Now, keep in mind, this is also, this is not the same if you have another resistor in series. If you add a resistor in series, it has to go through the first, then the second, then the third, so the total current is going to be less because REQ is going to be going up. A parallel, it's different. Okay, so let's do some math here. Let's figure out what our new REQ is, shall we? So we got 1 over 5. Come on. 1 over 10, 1 over 15, and then finally, 1 over 20. 1 over 0.4166 equals. So our new REQ is 0.4866. So it dropped substantially, REQ. Oops. Mm, 0.4866. We'll say 0.49 ohms. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. It says the current through the 5 ohm resistor is 2.4 amps. That's We got that. A 20 ohm Resistor is added to the circuit in parallel with the other resistors. Describe the effect of the addition of this resistor, which is this one, has on the amount of electrical energy expended in the 5 ohm resistor in two minutes. Okay, now thinking back to our circuit rules, if you can play two out of three, that's right, you must play two out of three. Now, looking at this, you may not know where to proceed from here, but if, again, sticking to your fundamental rules, if you stick to those basics, you'll be able to figure it out and unravel the whole thing. Um, what's the voltage of the battery? We haven't been given the voltage of the battery. Well, keep in mind, the voltage here, here, and here, and each of these parallel branches is, that's right, the same. So, with those two things in mind, we can calculate the voltage drop here. V is I times R, or I times R, 2.4 times 5, which is 12. So we know this is a 12 volt drop. Well, all these are in parallel, right? So that means 12 volts here, and of course, 12 volts here, which means the battery is, of course, 12 volts. Guess what? Same battery here. According to the problem, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, and 12 volts. Now, if you want to know the current through each one, um, you just do V over R. So the question says, calculate the amount of electrical energy expended in the 5 ohm resistor in two minutes. Well, We'll get to that in a second. Let's analyze the circuit first. Um, if I want to know if I want to know current, it's volts divided by resistance. So I have 12 over 5, 2.4. Okay, so if I want to know the current here, it's uh, let's see, we got. V, what do we do here? We did V is, excuse me, I is V over R, so that's uh, da, 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 12 over 10, 1.2, 12 over 15, oops, 
0.8. We're doing a lot more work than we need to for this problem, but it's worth it because it helps us understand how everything works. And then, of course, for the last one, 12 over 20, 0.6. So if you look at our total current, let's see what this said, this is 0.8. The current in each one of these resistors doesn't change. After all, the size of your block and uh, blockage, that is resistance, and the pressure going to it, that is the 12 volts, doesn't change, so the currents stay the same for each one. But as I said before, REQ, drops because we added a 20 ohm resistor in parallel which means our total current is going to go up that's correct where is it going to go up well these aren't changing as the math dictates but we're going to get 0.6 amps extra in the other branch that we added okay so that's why there's more current now calculate the amount of electrical energy expended in the 5 ohm resistor in two minutes let's assume that we're talking about this part um so that's here. Now, because this whiteboard is not big enough, um, <clears throat> we're going to erase everything else. Now, electrical energy expended. <whistles> electrical energy expended. It's just so many rules. Like, is it even worth it? Okay, let's see. Electrical energy expended okay um when your physics teachers tell you you need to memorize your units and you think it's you know dumb and annoying this is why you need to know them electrical energy expended well what's energy it doesn't matter if it's potential kinetic electrical whatever energy is joules now um, one formula that we haven't talked about yet, I'm going to erase these, is the power formula, P equals IV. Now, um, power, of course, is watts, capital W because it's named after a person. Uh, I is amps, capital A because it's named after ampere, and volts is volts after Alessandro Volta. Now, uh, a watt is a joule per second. And, oops, let's see. I is a coulomb per second. And a volt is a joule per coulomb. So what do we mean by that? Amps are coulombs per second. Volts are joules per coulomb. And watts are joules per second. Know these units, know your factor label. That's why we spend a month, a week, going over it at the beginning of the school year. You can see that if I take these coulombs and I cross them out because, uh, you know, units cancel, we have joules per seconds, which are equal to watts. Very good. Well, if I want joules, let's see, if I want joules, and I have joules divided by seconds, and I want to get to joules, all I got to do is multiply by seconds, and by the magic of factor label, they cancel out, and you're left with, come on markers, joules. Now, the antecedent here being joules over seconds, which is to say, if you can calculate watts based on current times voltage, you can then use the time to get to the joules. Uh, in physics, it's important to know your formulas, kind of. Kids try and just memorize their way or formula their way through the course. If you know your units and you know factor label, it makes it much, 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 much easier. So with that in mind, write this down. Good. Okay. So electrical energy dissipated. Again, we're talking about this spot right here. So how do we get to power? Power is I times V. Uh, so I, 2.4 amps 
times V, 12 volts. 2.4 times 12, 2.4 times 12, 28.8. All right, now it's 28.8 watts. Um, in terms of electricity being like water, you want to think of watts as like gallons per second. Sorry, liters per second, right? How the volume of water going by a certain area. Um, actually, no, that's that's current. Excuse me. So this would be the energy dissipated per second. So like a um, the old light bulbs that heat up a lot. That's how much heat they're giving off, how much heat energy they're giving off every second so we got 28.8 watts it says in two minutes well we're in mks so that's uh we got to go two minutes to seconds so that's 28.8 joules per one second times 120 seconds multiply the two together and you get 34 again seconds cancel 56 joules and you're done.